Welcome to our educational blog, Investors Insights here at Five Plan Partners. I am thrilled to be doing this because it's actually uh, the viewership that asked for more information. Uh, Jason Hatley uh, joining me here. Jason is a CFP, a CPA, PFS. Uh, he is our financial planning manager here at Five Plan Partners. And recently we did a blog on estate planning mistakes. The demand was, and feedback was so great, we're going to continue the discussion. So in another situation that I heard regarding uh, where someone came to me with us and their current advisor had put their names on the account and then did joint tenants with rights of survivorship with two of the kids. And there were four children total. And so the, the couple, as you were talking to them, didn't understand that at the event of joint tenants with you know, rights of survivorship, those two kids took control of the money, even though the will said, what was it? The will said all, the other, all four kids were supposed to split it up. Am I right about that? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people, you know, when, when you get in a situation where you've got bank accounts and, and you need, um, you know, a child or someone, someone else to help you manage the, the cash, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pay bills on your behalf, whatever the case may be. You know, the, the, the simplest thing that comes to mind is just to add them to the account to, to give them the, the, uh, uh, the ability to do that. The danger that you run into with that is that as soon as you put them on their on that account, they have as much control over that money as you do. Yeah. Um, they all, it also opens you up to any any liabilities that they have. Uh, if 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 they have uh, debt out there that creditors come after them for, mm -hmm. uh, they can come over, come after that money that's in that account that you've named them as joint owner of. Um, and so, you know, probably well, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think you pointed out too, it works both ways. Like if, let's say, for example, your uh, 80, 88 year old uh, mom and you're on the account with her and she accidentally hits somebody while driving and kills them or causes harm, they can come after your assets as well as your mom's, right? That's right. Yeah. It, now, it opens people don't realize that. to a lot of exposure that. Uh, is just not necessary. Right. So, um, so what do you, I, I know you've made recommendations here, but yeah. what do you recommend them? Because as people age, especially they, we will see where banks or credit unions or others will advise people to put uh, joint their child on there with joint ten tenants yeah. rights or survivorship. I explain how it should be handled in, in to be able to pass the money on to the kids, but not cause these liabilities. Yeah. So, well, from the standpoint of, of having, giving them the ability to pay bills for you or access the funds to, uh, you know, to, to use on your behalf, uh, you can always, always go into the bank and add them as a signer to the account uh, without adding them as a joint owner. Right. Um, from a, from the standpoint of, of having those assets passed to your children, uh, you know, I would recommend doing a, uh, uh, a, a, a transfer on death uh, designation on those accounts so that it, it, it works essentially the same as a as a beneficiary designation on a, on a retirement account or an insurance policy. Um, those those assets uh, will pass directly to to those named individuals mm -hmm. without going through the probate process. And so that in that type another term used on that, Transfer on death is TOD account. Okay? Yes, yes, right. Yeah, uh, and, and your your bank may use a different terminology, mm -hmm. um, but but it's and it, you know the concept is the same. So do, you know, go go to your bank and explain the situation and what you're uh, you know what you're trying to achieve, and they can they can advise you on how to uh, you know fill out the proper paperwork and name those individuals. Uh, that, that you want to have the uh, the money go to in the event of, of your death. And an another situation I'll bring up is outdated will. We, you, you will have people come to you that are outdated will. And one thing I'm really proud of is how you have, on the financial blueprint, using our Your Financial House process, you will do flow charts 
right. not only to show them how the old will worked, but in, in the, the accounts with beneficiaries, but to also get their thoughts on how the new one should work. Uh, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's one of the, the beauties of the, the software that we use is, you know, it gives us the ability to, you know, not only lay out kind of the, the base case, you know, what, how do things stand today as, as your estate planning documents are, are written, uh, but it can also give us the ability to, to, to lay out additional scenarios and make recommendations and show the impact of those recommendations. Um, you know, to, to show them if we make these changes to the will or to the designate or to the beneficiary designations, uh, you know, it will flow differently in this way and be more in accordance with, with what your intent is. Yes. Okay. Well said, sir. So, I mean, these are just some of the mistakes that I have witnessed uh, in conversations where Jason has, has helped people walk through this. I think it also shows the importance of the role we can play and the advice we can give in coordinating with the other professionals like an estate attorney and in utilizing a financial blueprint to map things out. And then as somebody who's been in the industry for a long time, I'm proud to be in meetings with you, Jason. Uh, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, what's the portfolio's returns, the performance, am I on track to reach my goals? It's another thing to say, you know what? You've worked so hard to establish this net worth, to achieve your dreams and goals, make sure you don't let it unravel from a legacy standpoint as well. That's right. So, and I've seen you have some great conversations with people uh, as well as seeing light bulbs go off as they go. Nobody, nobody ever said that to me before. And also correct me if I'm wrong, I think you've had a few situations where people thought they had wills only to find out they had the documents, but they'd never signed it. Is that, am I correct on that? That's right. Yeah, it, you know that those those <laughs> documents don't do a lot of good if, if you if you haven't signed them, had them notarized, and and you know on file with uh, with your attorney. Uh, you know what? One thing we would also recommend is to you know to keep those on file with your financial planner and your your financial advisor to make sure that uh, you know, in the in the event that you you do pass away unexpectedly um that you know there, there's more than one party that has those documents and, and they can they can all work together to make sure things get resolved uh the way that you want them to well and, and that's well said and i will i will say this you know one of our sayings around here is the key to success is not the statements you make but the questions you ask and you know we like to ask the questions and just like you said you know if you're not working with five plan partners have make sure you have that on file with your financial advisor, let me say this, it is, it is standard procedure. It is part of our, our experience here at Five Plan Partners that we have to have that on file because if something happens to you, we can't bring you back, but we can at least help the family, the executor of the estate, yeah. walk it through in a way so that if, if there's income that needs to be replaced, uh, the, your loved ones, the family members involved won't miss a beat. So uh, yeah, well, we, I, I've, we, I've seen you in action, Jason. Yeah. And I appreciate we've we've it. seen it too many times. We know, uh, we know the importance of, of uh, you know, being involved with that and, and having those documents on hand for us to refer to. Um, you know, that's one of the, one of the added values that we bring is, is the ability to sit down with uh, you know, with, with, with those that, that are left behind and help them sort through all the paperwork and all the, uh, the decisions that have to be made. So, um, you know, that, that's something that we, uh, we take pride in doing. Uh, it's not, not something that anybody wants to have to do, but uh, we, we certainly have the expertise to help you with that. Well said. Uh, I appreciate you greatly as a colleague, and hopefully those of you as our viewers have uh, gotten some great information, not only for you, but that you can forward this blog to others and share. And we will continue sharing these kind of discussions as well on our social media, our podcast. Uh, we like to share information uh, so that you can have more knowledge and share it with others as well. So I thoroughly enjoy working with you. I thoroughly enjoy your insight. And uh, folks, 
If you really like this, share it with others, uh, as well as continue the emails and phone calls you sent us last time, and uh, we'll keep you informed. Have a great week.